Tune in every Wednesday evening with familiar faces at the Dog and Pony Show. What up, Tosh Pasu Nero? It's your boy Asthmatic. It's a nice Thursday night, chilling in Hunter's Lab. Look. All right, we are back on Friday Night Lights with our final guest, Keem. Keem, what's up? How you been, man? Hey, living the dream. Living the dream. You've been putting in a lot of work at Ever Evolve Studios, man. You've been here almost every other day. Yeah, my dog has a bed here, so. <laughs> no, he's not kidding. His dog does have a bed upstairs in our studio. That just that he doesn't even lay on when he comes. He just lays on it for like two minutes. Then he'll get up and be like, "All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna lay on this rug underneath the engineer desk." Right behind his chair, so he can't. So I can't move. I'm just like stuck there with the dog. So, no man. So I first met you through a mutual artist, uh, GQ the Fool. Shout out to GQ, one half of Goodfellas. Them boys out in California right now. Um, He got you on a song called Red Room. Dope R and B track is coming out soon. You laid the bridge for that, and then you just stuck around in the session. You know what I'm saying? You like you showed your passion. You asking me a million questions, like yo, you know what I'm saying? And I I really like that. And I really like that energy though when people come in and they're they're very curious about like you know the process. How it breaks down, you know. You told me some nightmare stories and shit. So when I heard you, I was like, "Man, you're very talented." And then, like, I showed Scotty and stuff. I, I put him on, like, "Man, we gotta, you know, get this guy on." I'm Appreciate curious that as to like how intense did you practice growing up when it came to your singing? Because that's I'm an MC, so like, man, I I'm pretty sure the other MCs on the show can account that they've probably been in their room for six, seven hours just at it, just at it. So, but as a singer though, I'm pretty sure you have like a it's, it's different, you know what I'm saying? Because you don't want to strain your voice. I mean, it's different, but not exactly. I mean, I, I've trained pretty damn hard, especially early years. Like, it slowly just turned from, like, shut the hell up to can you come sing at my wedding? You know what I'm saying? Like, just slowly over time. So it, it, you got to practice a lot. It's all about repetition. Like, it, it's muscle memory. And, um, you know, I had my on years and my off years. Uh, so now we're back at it. Yeah. There you go. So... When in high school, like, when I was in high school, most cats were trying to get, like, sports scholarships or trying to get, like, academic scholarships. But you ended up getting a music scholarship to a, a school that was predominantly opera? Yeah, yeah. I went to uh, WIU to study vocal performance. So that was an interesting experience in itself. Uh, who the hell go pay my black ass to go up there and sing something that I don't even know what the hell I'm saying? And Italian and German and French and no. So it was challenging, it was hard, but it, it pushed me in it. And what it really like made me realize, I guess, is just don't let nobody put you in a box, you know what I'm saying? Like, there's so many different outlets that you could possibly have to, to better yourself, but if somebody tells you that you can only, you know, play basketball or, you know, like, yeah, yeah, do yeah, sports, yeah. that's not the only way you can get a scholarship. I sang words I didn't know and got paid for it. Come on now. <laughs> it's a win-win. So what are some other lessons you took away from opera school? Is that, is that the main one you took away? I guess I would say that's my main one, but another thing that I would say it really did is just kind of don't be scared. I know I said don't limit you, like, but it's different from don't be scared. Like, you got to take that shit head on. Like, I'm the only black dude in the class full of people that have been doing this their whole life. They're looking at me like, why the hell is he here? You know what I'm saying? So, it, it, and I took that shit head on. And I tried my absolute hardest. I mean, I didn't finish, but... Sorry, hey, but you but you took away you know you took away what you needed and you know you ran with it. Exactly. Sometimes it needs to happen. You know sometimes you don't necessarily get through something, but you take what you learn, you keep it moving. You know what I'm saying a lot of people what they do they stop. They be like they feel defeated. You know mm-hmm. they they get they let themselves get down. But I always tell people like no matter what you can always bounce back. Always bounce back no matter what. So That's facts. You also played the piano. Did that happen at the same time you were singing, or did it come in the middle later on? So I picked up the keys probably like mid sophomore year, maybe mid freshman year. I don't remember. They had like practice rooms outside of the choir rehearsal, and you can like spend your study hall basically just playing the piano, doing whatever you wanted. So just YouTube, self taught. Sophomore year in college or high school? High school. Okay. High school. Yeah. Yeah. How about some piano players that you look up to? Uh, to be honest, I can't really name that many. Yeah, but myself. Who made me. To <laughs> exactly. Yeah, me. Who made me want to really play the piano though? It's just John Legend. I mean. When I said it was shut up to sing at my wedding, John Legend was my shut up phase still. So ordinary people rang through the walls of my house. <laughs> and I got big ass family, so they hate that song. But John Legend. John I appreciate One day John Legend's gonna see this. He's gonna he's gonna rock with you. Watch. Yes, sir. Call it in and out. <laughs> so you know, this is the dog and pony show, and you have a dog. 
I do. He's kind of crazy. He's a little crazy. Yeah, he's 95 pounds, and you think he's a uh, Yorkie or something. Like he's 95 <laughs> pound, what, pit bull, right? Yeah, pit bull? red nose, pit bull, yeah. Yeah, he, so Keem brings his dog. I open the door. This dog <laughs> immediately barking at me. I'm like, oh, shit. I'm like, all right. But he came upstairs. He got comfortable. Too comfortable. Yeah, laid in his lap. <laughs> he was laid in my lap. He kicked, like, two people off the couch, fell asleep, you know. But I had dogs growing up, and, you know, Dogs sometimes do some real dumb shit that you just look at them like, what the fuck are you doing? You know what I'm saying? I what's, the, what's some top moments that you looked at uh, Hendrix and like, bro, really? Like, really? You going to put me, you going to do this to me? It's literally pissing me off thinking about it right now. Um, I'll name two real quick. One time was when I was coming back from Ever Evolved. Uh, we used to had an overnight session where I woke up in the stew. And I get back home and shit, all on the floor. I have carpet. And every store is closed down and boarded up because people were looting the day before. So I couldn't even find nothing to clean the shit out of my carpet. Is the shit still there? No, <laughs> no, no. no. <laughs> Good question. I got used to the smell. <laughs> and the second time, um, I was with my cousin, and people that know me know I got a habit of just forgetting shit. I forget everything. I lose it. So literally, I'm getting ready to take my dog out. I know he got to use the bathroom, kind of whining. But I can't find my keys. So I'm looking for my keys, looking for my keys. I'm running, and my, friend, my cousin, he's like, come on, man, let's go, let's go. And then my dog's standing right there on the door, the only place that has tile. And he just look at me, start pissing. And I'm not playing. Like, it was like a fucking 60-second piss just looking at me, eye contact. Like, I'm so sorry, I can't stop. And, yeah. So anybody want a dog, add me on Instagram or whatever, Keem Singing, and... Come get him. We have him a up. dog trainer that works at Ever Evolve. His name is C-Mac. C-Mac. He's a dog whisperer. He think he a dog whisperer, but he is, he a bully just and a my dog, dog a bully, so they're both trying to bully each other. <laughs> C-Mac came in the studio one day when he saw Keem's dog. He was like, hus, hus, hus. I was like, are you speaking dog to him? He's like, yeah, he understand me. He know what's going on. I'm like, okay, if you say so, bro, if you say so. So, like, nah. so, back, so back to the studio, you came probably like a week or two later after the GQ session, I think. Yeah, I think two weeks later, and i kind of been there faithfully here every So, week. I heard through the grapevine that on Juneteenth, you dropped a song on SoundCloud called It's Going Down that I helped you. We both produced. Shout out Radcliffe Music. He's on there as well. Yes, sir. Sure. Um, what it reminds me of is Marvin Gaye's album, What's Going On. Now, Marvin Gaye was obviously, you know, like a very soulful singer and very, like, you know, for the ladies and stuff, but that specific album was for the people. It was very powerful. And the song, What's Going On, you know, he's like, mother, mother, where he's singing yeah, that. And yeah. like, it, it's like real funky. Like, you could feel the beat, exactly. but he's saying some powerful shit. You know what I'm saying? And that's what reminded me of this Is Going Down song, yeah. where you're saying some powerful things, but at the same time, people could be like, you know, they could get down to it and dance, but that message is slowly being planted in their heads. And it's going to be like, oh, wait, he's actually talking about the world right now. So I was in the studio with you, but I want to know what was your perspective when we were coming up with that song? Like, what was the emotion? What was the feeling? How'd it happen? Yeah, it's a, it's a pretty cool story, I'm not going to lie. Just because, like you said, the state that the world was in at the moment, and literally we listening to, like, police scanners, and it just kind of sparked in my head because it, shit was on fire. Like, it literally was on fire. And then this hook that I wrote a long time ago that was, like, there's a fire burning spread across the nation And I only can ask for one, what I say, donation Lend me your ears and feel that good, good, good vibration And it was just, I ain't like that shit at all I didn't like it And then I was just like, man, like I got this bass line I wanted to use that sample And we started cooking and then that hook just came with it And I was like, holy shit, like there's this fire burning spreading across the nation Like we gotta lay this down right now And then, boom, history Take off, take off. Yeah, that's going to be everywhere on all platforms, and the video will be released on the 4th of July. Kind of like a middle finger to America. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, Slightly, but... What's crazy is, like, <laughs> as an MC, as an artist, I've written lyrics. I'm sure any music artist in here has written lyrics that they may like, or at the moment they'll be like, hmm. But then later on, you might hear a beat, or, you know, you might make a beat and be like, oh, wait, mm -hmm. this is the one. You know, so that's another thing that I feel artists need to be is patient. You know, not necessarily... It may not happen right then. Because what, we took, what, two, three weeks to make that song? Yep. Because we, we laid the idea, we came back, laid the chords, went back in it, added some more. You know, you get, it's like, you know, cooking up a meal, you know. You got to put all the flavors in it. You know, yeah. you got to put all the flavors in it. And that's a hook wrote in, like, four years ago. You know what I'm saying? That's relevant that's now. You, that, Don't but give up you still on had it in your head. You Do still had up. it in your head. Exactly. That's what matters. Mm -hmm. Don't throw it away.
Don't throw it away. MCs, artists, singers, whoever you are, do not throw anything away. So you shooting a video for that, you said? Um, no. No, shoot you're not? Video next weekend. No, obviously, I'm saying you are going to shoot a video for it's going down. Yeah, we're shooting a video for it, and it's a dope concept. Um, try to take on a role of, like, a historical character. And, yeah, I don't want to even give up too much about it. It's just I'm so excited, and my whole family is the cast of it, so... It's just, yeah, it's going down. It's if you want to hear a sneak peek, you can go to his SoundCloud. We'll put it, you know, we'll put it where you need to see. So you can go listen to that exclusive. But like you said, it's going to be on all platforms. The video is going to be out July 4th. So one more question before we go. You're, you're a quarter into life. You're 25 years old. What's yes, the sir? next 25 looking like? That's a hard question. That is a hard question. Um, when, I, when I think about the next 25 years, to be honest, it kind of just looks a lot like the past three months. A lot of content, a lot of work. I'm, I'm loving my life. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's, it's just a different feeling. So that's what the next 25 years look like to me. Like this. I hope you do great on your journey. Like I said, I'm going to be there to support you. Dog and Pony Show, you know we're going to be there to support you. Appreciate it. But we got to hear this voice, man. We have to hear this voice. So, Keem's going to perform with us on Friday Night Lights. I'm excited. We'll be back. than a dozen U.S. cities have across ordered the United nighttime States curfews remain in a state of high tension tonight. America, America is burning. burning. There's a fire burning spread across the nation. 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 Have across the United States curfews. remain in a state of high tension tonight. America is burning. There's a fire burning spread across the nation. 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 It's going down.